Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. We're up here in the Third Testament. We're about to do a class on chapter 42. I got my wife with me. Say hi, stay. Alright, so we're looking at chapter 42. It's on uh, guilt and penitence, trials and suffering. Alright, now this one is broken down into five parts. And what I believe we're going to do is put some kind of way that people can tell which part. Maybe we'll put a one up when we're on first section or a two up when we're on second section. That way, when instead of looking at the whole thing, maybe you only want like a small part. Maybe you just only want to hear about faith, conformity, and humility during the trials. And so you can fast forward it. Mm -hmm. Try it that way. Well. Sounds good. Alright, so let's jump down. Alright, so we're here at the first section. Again, this is chapter 42, talking about guilt and penitence, trials and suffering. We're here at the first section, which is called the need for repentance and atonement. The need for repentance. Number one, if many times I permit you to drain the same cup that you gave to your brethren, it is because there are some who only in this way realize the wrong they caused and by experiencing the same ordeal which they caused to others, they will become aware of the pain they provoke. This will give light to their spirit and bring understanding, repentance, and therefore fulfillment of my law. And we could do the whole class, we could do a whole class on this one verse. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, think about what he's saying here, that whenever we cause pain in another person, there's many of us who, um, it doesn't say all of us there, but it says there's, 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 there's a certain type of us that will have to ex endure the same pain. We find out in the Old Testament and the New Testament, I can't remember which, but even if we laugh at people, like if you laugh at a person that's going through a certain calamity, that you will find yourself in that same predicament. Yeah, many times we have talked about how uh, you did something to someone and uh, maybe caused them pain or caused them uh, a deep sorrow. And then that same thing will, at a later time, seem to come back, maybe in a different form, but you'll always remember um, that it was something like the same thing that you did to another. No. Yeah. All right. Then go ahead. But if you wish to pass through the pain without draining the cup of bitterness, you may do so by paying your debt with repentance good works, and all that your conscience tell you that you must do. In this way you may pay a debt of love and return an honor, a life, or the peace, health, and joy, or the bread that you may have stolen from your brothers. All right, we got two sentences there. Um, the first one is talking about a different type of people, people who don't want to necessarily go through the same problems that they have caused or... They don't want to go through what, it, what what verse 1 was talking about. That you have a different way. You can go through it a different way. If you don't want to drain the cup, you can do repentance, good works, and all that your conscience tells you that you must do. Mm -hmm. I said, and this is a way of paying debts. See, we're going to find out in this chapter that the debt's going to have to get paid. You can do it one way or the other. You can, you can you know, be on punishment or you can get a whooping. There ain't no other, you know. What is a debt? What do you mean by debt? Um, transgression. Remember when you say, Our Father, you know, who are in heaven, he says... Um, Forgive us our debt. Yeah. And then I think in another part it might say... Tra um, tra but it's it's talking about the stuff that you... I don't know. Maybe why... I was, you know, I'm wondering... I was thinking about the word debt. And a debt is something that you owe someone. And... I was wondering why was that word used instead of, um, I think in the other uh, form it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, think of it, think of it as an account. When it's all said and done, you're going to have to make good on all of, all of your accounts. Your account with the Father, you're going to have to make good. 
like you know if you owe money you're going to have to come and pay that money or if you or if you do something you, you'll get it back well this account what what you're doing to put your account in the negative is actually causing hurt harm and pain to your brother or not relieving them of the pains that they have either way I mean not not doing good is just as bad as you know doing bad but and so when we fail to help those or when we harm others we we're we're we're, we're taking on we're, we're taking on debt we're taking on load this has to be paid back you've gotten some credit now it's time to pay up you know so when that bill comes you it's like a debt I don't think it's making any sense. Yeah, well, it does make sense when he says we ask the Father to forgive us of our debts. Forgive us. Are we asking him to forgive us of those things that we got to pay back? Mm -hmm. And as we forgive those others of the things that they got to pay back for us. So. Everything, you, every stain you put down has to be has to be made up for. Even that stuff you did way back in the first grade that you don't even remember, you're going to have to make up for it. But if it now you can pay the debt by repentance, if you somehow can remember that thing and, you know, ask the Father to forgive you, you know, you, you can take care of that debt that way. But if you don't, if you never get around to repent, well, now, you know, here comes the, here comes, here comes, well, we're going to find out in this chapter what's going to happen to you. He's going to get in, he's going to go into more detail about the kinds of things that come up on us as the result. Okay, number three. Observe how different is the reality of my justice from the idea that you have formed of your father. Yeah, that ain't what we're taught in church. That ain't where we're taught nowhere. You know, in fact, I believe down at the church, he says that all they, they try to tell us that, you know, Jesus got rid of all of our sins and our debts. Yeah, they're telling us now that, um, well, I've not personally experienced it, but I've seen where... Uh, you're being told now that we can't sin. Our sins are, we are no longer under sin. Therefore, um, you know, Jesus, what, didn't forgive us of our sins? We never had any sins? Or, there is or no such okay, thing as it's sin. It's okay to sin. Yeah, it sounds no like there's no sin. such thing whatsoever. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not sin. You know, as long as you're doing it and you, you know, call the name of Jesus... It's not a sin, you know. Okay, number four. Do not forget that I have come to tell you that none of you will be lost. It is also true that I have said that every debt must be settled and every fault erased from the book of life. Hold on. Let, let's look at this. Now, some, of these chapters, some of these verses get a little bit long. But it says, um, first of all, it says none of you will be lost. This we learn in the third testament of the Bible. This is, you know, another thing that's contra contradictory to what we've been taught in, in, in church. At the end of the day, everybody will be with the Father. There's no people that will be thrown in some lake of fire and left there forever, never to be, you know, you know, to burn forever. That really doesn't happen. You know, you have the debts to pay, but eventually you 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 um once those debts are paid, you didn't get to go back and be with the Father. And then it says, um, it is also true that I have said that every debt must be settled and every fault erased from the book of life. Everything that we ever did. One time I was I was in, in school and I had this little sharp piece of metal. And for some reason, I got the bright idea to tell this little kid to hold this piece of metal. Like, here, hold this. And as soon as he put his finger around it, I pulled it out of his hand and cut his finger, cut his thumb, like, well, I mean, a big cut, too. And even after it happened, I didn't see, you know, I didn't see anything wrong with that. It was like, wow, you're bleeding now. So, did that come back and happen to you, something like well, that? I remember that, and, you know, I've repented over that thing, you know, several times, and, you know, eventually you got to accept the fact that you, you have been forgiven. But the point is, is that what are the other stuff that I did? 
I mean, that should have stood out to me big when you had, you had blood spraying all over the place. You know, that should have been a big deal for me. But it, it so I could imagine the other stuff that, you know, he, that I even now don't think was such a big deal, but was actually a, an offense against my brother. Actually, you know, I hurt or harmed him or, you know, because I, I just wasn't thinking. But now all of that stuff has to be made up. Every fault has to be made up. Every one of them. And it's going to come back on me. Right, and I'm thinking about how uh, not only our physical actions, but in later, you know, in another chapter of the Third Testament, it tells us that our thoughts are deeds. So our thoughts has, have to be made up too. And you know, back when Coach said that about none of us will be lost, remember that he's talking about um, the Father's talking about our spirit, man. You know, you think about well. Jeffrey Dahmer or something like that. He's gonna. He's not gonna be lost. Nope. He's not gonna be lost because he's talking about the spirit man. And I think in the reading that we did previously, we talked about how uh, it tells us how every every person has a part of the Father in him. So yeah, that spirit man will not be lost. Very good, Stacy. Let me read the next one. Um. Well, it is up to you to choose the path to me. Free will is still yours. What you say on that? Well, I really like that about how the Father gives us free will. You know, sometimes you, you say, well, you know, if I'm in a situation, I was, and I would say, well, well, make me do it. You know, make me do right or, or, mm -hmm. or so that this situation will be better. You know, I give you permission or whatever to make me do it. But he gives us free will, and that's a good thing. I think that's, a, you know, I think that's great. He gives us free will not only of our deeds but our thoughts. And I just, I really think that's a great thing. One of the things we're going to find out is in this chapter, I believe, is, you know, some evidence that this life here on earth is kind of a proven ground where we learn what it is that we are supposed to do and then we actually have to do it so that's what he's saying right there too when he says it is up to you to choose the path to me you know so we, we got to make the choice and if we don't make the choice in this lifetime we'll find out like in another chapter that you know we'll get another shot we'll get another shot at it yeah I think about how I think it was Joshua said when he told the children of Israel choose you this day who you will serve Mm -hmm. It's free will. It's your choice. It's yeah. your choice. So. Number five, if you prefer the law of retaliation of ancient times as it as it's still practiced by men from their proud nations, behold its results. Yeah, so what's the results of that? War? People shooting each other? Road rage? Fights? I mean, this is what it, what it was. When somebody did something to you, you did something to them. You know, so if we prefer that, you know, I guess we see see what the result of it is. If you want the measure with which you judge your brother and also use against you, do not even wait for your entrance into the other existence to receive my justice. For here, when you least expect it, you will. You're, you will find yourself in the same difficulty in which you place your fellow man. The same difficulty. So, and and not so much that you've done something to the person. He said, judge. So if you've judged the person. But this ain't this ain't entirely new to us here in the Third Testament of the Bible. We heard that in, Matt, in, in the Sermon on the Mount. When he said, judge not and you be not judged. For with judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Well, a lot of people think he's talking about judgment day when we stand you know quote unquote stand before the father and he judges but it's talking about right now right this second possibly next minute yeah just, the next minute you know yeah a few five minutes ago all judgments they come up they come on you so that's what he meant in in the sermon on the mount when he was trying when he was telling us don't judge people because this is the result. We never heard the result back then. We didn't know what was going to be happening. I mean, it does say, judge and you shall be judged. But it didn't say that we was going to get the same thing put on us. But that's what happens. And when you look at the, when you look at it, like I catch myself 
being judgmental, you know, especially after I've, you know, read this and, under, you know, understand its implications in my life, I try to evaluate myself and I do find myself judgmental. But when I do and look back, it's like, okay, well, here come that same calamity on me because it actually does. It comes right, right then. It's going to happen. You know, so now what I do is I, I try to get ahead of it. When I find myself being judgmental, I, you know, catch myself, stop, get repentful, and like, Lord, let, you know, try to think about something else. Because, yeah. Oops, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say that that's been my most helpful thing since I've heard this about how judgment comes right then or, you know, From sooner. This lifetime. Yeah, in this lifetime, sooner, sooner than later. That my main thing for me that has been helping me a lot is to try to think about something else, or try to think about that person or that that thing in a in a better light. So mm -hmm. that's been helping. Number seven. Mm -hmm. But if you want a more elevated law to come to your aid, not only to spare you from suffering, which is what you fear most. But also to inspire in you noble thoughts and good sentiments. Pray, call me, and proceed along your path to struggle to be better each time. To be stronger in your ideals. Or in short, to settle with love the debt that you have with your father and with your fellow men. That's a mouthful. That is a long one. <laughs> we need to take it slow by slow. But what do you, what do you mean by elevated law? If you want... A more elevated law. So I guess that's kind of, uh, if, if you don't want the primitive law or I for I or two for a tooth, if you want a more elevated law, not only to spare you from suffering, which means that, you know, like you said, thoughts are deeds. So even our thoughts, we have to, to you know, suffer for those, our bad thoughts. Um, and his, you know, and yeah, we don't like to suffer. Right. That's one thing that scares, scares us the most is, I mean, you know, have to be in pain or whatever. He says, but also to inspire in you noble thoughts and good sentiments, pray. Call me and proceed along your path to struggle to be better each time, to be stronger in your deals, and in short, to settle with love the debts that you have with your father and with your fellow man. So that's what he's talking about earlier about repentance. Charitable deeds. And don't those line up? Yeah, you know what he says to uh, Let me go up there and look. To be better each time to become stronger. Like when you repent, you know, when we repent, we're actually not supposed to go back and do that deed over again. So therefore we're becoming better, we're becoming stronger, and um, we're actually doing what we said that we want we won't do again. Repentance, good works, and listening to your conscience. And down here, where were we at? Number seven, I believe. Um, good sentiment. Oh, what it says? Noble thoughts, good sentiments. No, it says pray, call me, and proceed along your path. Okay. So I can see where they can line up, but I, I may take a pencil to do it. Let's go on. Number eight. Someone usually asks me, Master, if you forgive our faults. Why do you allow us to cleanse them through suffering? Yeah, so people people say, somebody asked this the other day. So he forgives us of our faults. Why, why are we talking about how you have the angel of repentance? How you have to go through this, this period where you are punished for your deeds? Why is this necessary if he has forgiven us? Mm -hmm. What was your answer? Well, go ahead. Let's look what the Bible says. To answer this, to this I answer, I forgive you, but it is necessary for you to correct those faults in order that you, in order for you to give back to your spirit is purity. Yeah, so that's why. So just because you've been forgiven, you still have to, you still have to pay. You still have to punish, be punished. You know, so you can imagine you you go you have your two children that are that you know come to you in an argument one is arguing that one stole my stuff this one over here says i'm sorry but doesn't he have to give back the stuff too 
Right. Does his does. does his sorry say he gets to keep it? He has to make the other person whole. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. He says, he, Give back your spirit. But he, spirit but he said, I'm sorry. And the other person say, I forgive you. I forgive you. <laughs> but he's still standing there with my stuff. You still got my thing. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, that that's a that's a good one. Where it says, you know, in order for you to give back to your spirit is purity. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Number nine, I have told you that every last stain shall be cleansed from the hearts of men. Yet I tell you also that it will be each one of you who must cleanse himself of his own stains. Yeah. So, and and this is where some confusion. Is being added to the church. You know, we understand that not all of their teachings line up with the scripture. This is one of the areas that's quite dangerous. Is because they're telling us the opposite down there at the church. They're telling us the opposite. They're telling us that Jesus wiped away our sins, our stains. This ain't lining up <laughs> with the with, with the with the script with the actual words on the book. So, I'm going to ask you this question as play the advocate. So, if Jesus did not wipe away our sins and our stains, and we still have to uh, cleanse our own stains, so what actually did he do? The, as far as our sin. Right. See, you, you got to understand the role of the high priest. It was it was Aaron's responsibility on atonement day to go in before the Lord to sacrifice, make you know specific sacrifices, and to stay there and to stand there and make repentance for the whole um, nation of Israel. He did this every year. So here I am. I'm just a regular old person that don't know much about the scripture, the law or anything. And I made mistakes all year long. It's But yet on atonement day, I do my necessary stuff that I'm supposed to do to fulfill the requirements of Leviticus 23 as far as atonement day. And while I'm doing that, Aaron goes in before the Lord and makes the atone and gets the atonement for me. Well, that's what the Messiah is doing. He's going before the Lord and getting the uh, the atonement for me. So that's that's kind of what it, what it, where that's coming from when they say that He's forgiven us of our sins. But does that mean that I don't have to care about my sin? That I, I don't really, you know, so what? If if the, if you have the Messiah who does this perfectly now, you ain't got to worry about him missing no times or getting it wrong or whatever. Didn't you know? burnt up by fire for taking strange wine in there or whatever why then should I or why then would I care about sin and the answer is I don't know well I was, I was just thinking if um, if the Messiah went in and did away with our sins and therefore we don't have to worry about them anymore then you know, the scripture could should have, could have been cut off right then and there. Why is Paul, Peter, and the rest of us telling us, giving us instructions? You know. Why did the book continue? Yeah. If he'd, why did it continue? If he end it, if he'd have ended all sin, why do we even have a book in the first place that talks about sin? Why didn't it just yeah, fizzle yeah. out somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Remember that I have told you, with the measure you use, you shall be measured. And whatever a man sows, that that shall he also reap. So that's talking about judging. Um, whatever how whatever standard you judge your neighbor, you be careful because it's going it's going to come back on you. And and what whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. Now, th but this is what that I'm struggling with now. It's not so much as judging others. I can forgive my neighbor. He can do anything he want. You know, just about at this point. And you know, if I find myself. You know, thinking it odd, I just simply pray. And, but what about my own family and my children and, and, you know, people that are under my direction and, and you know, leadership? How do, you, how do you deal with that? That's one of the things I'm struggling with. Do you, do you, are you judgmental towards your children that are doing such and such? You know, kind of have to be judged, a little bit judgmental if you're about to give them a whooping for that thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know. 
I don't know. Like I said, I struggle with that one. Number 10. Of the material offerings which mankind offers me, I only receive the good intention when it is truly good, for an offering does not always represent a noble and elevated intention. Yeah, so, and he knows our heart. In, in another, I can't remember if it was in this section, but he was talking about how, you know, ain't no gift you can give me to, to make up for, you know, errors, the transgressions. There's the, I think it is this chapter. You know, he created everything. How are you going to just give me a frivolous gift? No, he, he really wants, what, what is this, a contrite heart? What was what, what, that? Mm -hmm. you know. I can't remember it, but yeah, a contrite heart, yeah. Mm -hmm. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, thinking about the offerings, you, th you think about the offering that Saul gave um, the father when he wasn't necessarily supposed to. Uh, it's not necessarily that he's looking for these offerings. It's not necessarily that he's looking for the sacrifices. He wants us to be obedient and do exactly what he tells us to do. And it's always for our good. There are many times when men present me their offerings in order to cover up their wickedness or to demand something in return. Yeah, so, and I may be guilty of the latter one there where I would do something, you know, expecting to get something out of it. To be honest, this is part of the reason why I'm doing this class. You know, it's been a long time since we've done a class. We're at, this is the last day of hunting, and, you know, I'm trying to catch a blessing, you know, so I'm coming in like, hey, let's, let's do a class right quick. Maybe, we, you know, we do a charitable deed, you know, the Lord will bless us with, you know, um, the last harvest of the year. Yeah, the, a harvest of the last day of hunting season, you know, but, you know, we'll see. We hear a gunshot go off before this video, but we'll know, I guess. <laughs> that is why I tell you that the gift of peace for the spirit cannot be purchased. And his stains cannot be cleansed with material wealth. Even if you could offer me the greatest of material treasures. Material treasures. Ain't nothing in the world you can give the Father. He created everything. What you gonna give him? You know, uh, uh, tons of gold. The, the Russians, you know, got a lot of gold out of Venezuela. Could you, could you imagine if they were to present that to the Father Creator and say, you know, so what? How much gold did he actually create on the planet, you know? And, and it really doesn't matter anyway. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's like when the, um, the man saw the disciples, uh, the people with, uh, that had Holy Spirit, that he, he offered them money for it. Mm -hmm. You remember that in yeah. the scripture? So, yeah, that's kind of ridiculous to offer the Father uh, material wealth. But, you know, we do it. Or can, is this considered also when you say, well, Lord, if you bless me with, you know, so-and-so, then I'll do this. Um, yeah, then, yeah, but the way you say it may not sound be so material if you're going to you're gonna do that, you know. Because it's usually something like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do better. I'll or go to like church that. or I'll quit yeah. smoking or, you know, yeah. something like that. But, you know, I guess... To, to line over here, you know, if you bless me with this, then I'll, oh, I know it. If you give me, uh, if you let me hit the lottery, I'll, I'll send, you know, all yeah. my relatives, I'll pay all my relatives' bills off and, you know, all that kind Feed of stuff. Feed the hungry kids. Feed the hungry kids, you know, all that stuff you think about. Mm -hmm. stuff. But one thing I want, before we get on too far, I'll, you see it's right there, the gift of peace of the spirit. Now, that's huge. That, that there is a big gift that I think, and I bring it out because I think it could be overlooked. People say, well, peace, you know, that, that's a huge blessing that he talks a lot about in the Third Testament is having peace of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so this is what he said we're working towards or, you know, that's what, it, that's what it's talking about. But it says it cannot be purchased uh, and its stains cannot be cleansed with material wealth. So... Um, we have to remove a certain level of stains, I guess, to even have this kind of peace. So, mm -hmm. yeah, anyway. Number 11. When men offer me true repentance, sorrow for having offended me, regeneration, correction of their ways, restitution for faults committed, all with the humility 
that I have taught you, then indeed are men presenting me the true offerings of the heart, of the mind, of the spirit, which are infinitely more pleasing to your father than incense, flowers, and candles. Now see, th this is this is why we give these classes, and this is why we show the the text up there too, because you know I ain't nothing I can say to you know to 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 top the words that's written down on paper. I mean that that's that's self-explanatory. What would you what would you say to that? Well, when I think about the incense, flowers, and candles, I think about the uh, the Oriental nail shops. Yeah. How they have oh. the little uh, god that's in there with the incense, the flowers, the candy, the candles, they and all that. It to yeah, presenting it to yeah. them. But the father's saying that no, I just want a contrite spirit and I want a uh, a broken heart. You give that to me, and that's better than anything that you could offer up to me. Well, now, there are chapters in here about materialism, and he talks about how these people, that's where they're at. That they are materialistic people, so they can't see past making anything other than a materialistic offering. Once they become spiritualized, which a lot of them will, once they become spiritualist beings, then they will understand... Um, what it means for spirit to spirit communication, how he wants us to, you know, spend time with him in, you know, uh, in, in quiet and, you know, and in nature, opposed to, you know, shopping and, you know, giving gifts or whatever. It's a learning process. We, we got to get there. We're, we're learning. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're up here at the next section. We're start the next another section. This one is called the Law of Atonement. Want to keep going, stay? Yeah. Check the battery power. Okay. Uh, looks like we are at 73%. Alright, you ready? The Law of Atonement. You have had one opportunity after another to understand my infinite love for you. One opportunity after another, talking about the Law of Atonement. So it's been, it means we've been getting popped plenty of times. I know I have. Everybody has. Everybody's been catching a lot of beatings in life. I guess that's what it said. I have. Granted you spiritual gifts and given you the opportunity to cor correct your mistakes and to purify and perfect your spirit rather than condemning you eternally as you previously believed. Yeah, so I guess what this is saying is that we, we had the opportunity to make up these faults here on earth opposed to having to make them up after we're dead. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's what we're taught. Is that, you know, you be down here and you basically do whatever and then all of a sudden you die and you got to, you know, pay. Yeah, you got to face the judge. You got a judgment day, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Number 13. Who of those who know these teachings and have faith that they contain truth would dare deviate from his mission in the world, knowing that he is therefore preparing an even more difficult restitution for his spirit so once you once you understand this you know it kind of changes the way you the way you look at at stuff i was watching or i heard a, a story about a lady at the dunkin donuts that the, an employee at the dunkin donuts decided to pour water on a homeless man that was you know hanging out there too much and but what you learn in the third testament is that if she had realized that this was also a child of God, no matter his situation or who he was or what he looked like or even what he smelled like, this is a, a child of the Creator just like her, then she wouldn't have acted so. And but it's because she didn't realize that this was, she just look. I guess you look at that old dog or something. Just, just well, so many times it's because we've been taught that we haven't been giving teaching on the spirit and we're just looking at the outer appearance and he's he he's not what we expect to be sitting in a dunkin donut uh you know sipping on coffee or even if he's just charging his cell phone he shouldn't be there and so you know she wasn't looking at him as a as a spirit a spirit being yeah. but the great thing about it is if she listens to the Third Testament, she has opportunity to uh, go back and, what, drain her cup? Oh, she's going to get the truck cup drained. If she learned that she, she can and must repent and have the opportunity to do so, you know, before she has to drain the cup. Drain the cup is going to be, that's going to be tough. 
that's gonna be hard because it's it's uh, I'm just thinking it's gonna be so much stuff that's coming all at one time it's all supposed to be packed in seven years or you know after the seven year period everybody's cup on the planet will be drained <laughs> at one time so that's gonna be that's gonna be tough mm -hmm. that's a lot of draining 14 for if it is true that my justice offers you new opportunities to cleanse your stain and repair mistakes it is also true that each opportunity increases the number of tests and that the work and suffering are more intense each time just as are the mistakes so it's getting worse and worse it says for if it is true that my justice offers you new opportunities to cleanse your stains and repair mistakes it is also true that each opportunity so so you're given let me see if I understand it so you're given the opportunity to cleanse the, the, the stain but now if you take the opportunity and cleanse that stain then you're done but if you don't take the opportunity to cleanse the stain you must need other opportunities mm -hmm. and when you get these other opportunities they're going to what increase the number of tests and the work and suffering are more intense each time mm -hmm. just as the mistakes so they get worse and worse give an example I can make up one so yeah. you've done this thing you, 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 you've committed this thing you, you, I've stolen my brother's stuff and now you know it's a year later and I'm presented the opportunity to make it right for instance somebody steals my stuff or I lose something or my brother comes and says I need so and so and you know and I can, you know or you know something like that but given the opportunity my brother imagine he comes to my door and he says look I know you stole my hundred dollars I know you stole it it's, it's okay I forgive you but I, I'm in need right now I my family has a bill that we must get paid can you help me out right now and you know of course it should be more maybe you know it should be more than whatever I took but my response is no I didn't I ain't take nothing I don't know what you're talking about even though I know I really did there is an opportunity to make it good I need a thousand dollars okay here it is you know that oh the Bible says pay double I took a hundred dollars so now I gotta pay back you know either you know two hundred dollars but instead of taking that opportunity and cleansing the stain you know I, I, no uh -uh, I ain't do it no I ain't got it or you know or whatever and I don't make good on it well next time it's gonna be worse mm -hmm. next time you may have a gun <laughs> I don't know next time it may be your whole house burning down yeah that's what I was thinking something you know could bad happen to you yeah mm -hmm. yeah 15 your duty so as not to speak of punishment shall be to repair to restore and to repay even the last of your debts yeah now we find out in, a, in another section that anytime somebody comes and asks you for something you're supposed to act like you owe that person if a random person that you've never met in a state you ain't never been before come up and say hey man let me get you know ten dollars you're supposed to whip it out as if you owe them as if somehow this person you know you you're actually indebted to them you know and and here it is you know give it to them quickly and thank them for giving you the opportunity to pay it back kind of deal well that makes me think about Hermes where it tells us that if someone comes and asks you for something, don't even um, don't think about think it. about yeah. you know why they need it. Uh, you got more than me. Why are you asking me and things of that sort? Yeah. It says yet. Oh. Okay. No one, not your celestial father, nor your brothers on earth and in the spiritual valley, will do what you alone must do. Yeah, so that saying that Jesus did away with all of our sins needs to change. That needs to go away. Mm. We gotta make we gotta make up. We gotta we have to do. We're gonna do it. It's gonna happen. When is it gonna happen for us? I mean, is it gonna happen 
in times of peace, when we have the opportunity to cleanse the stains on our own and make good, or are we going to wait to the last minute when everybody is in trouble? It's going to happen now or later, now or later. Yet, I must tell you that I will always come to your call, that when you see yourself as alone or abandoned, you will feel my presence. And that the spiritual world will always come to help you with the weight of your cross. Yeah, so, you know, even if you, e e even if you choose not to try to restore and repair, but you, and, you, and so you decide to wait to the last minute, yeah, when you call on him, he coming. He coming. You know? Mm -hmm. That's just the, that's just the way, way our father is. He's a fatherly figure, just like my children out there now that, you know, are, you know, a few of them are, I will say, worldly, you know, children. Even if they were to call me up and say, Dad, uh, I need you right now. I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm going. Yeah. But when I get there, you know, I may not be into their I may not do what they expect me to do, you know. Dad, uh, I'm just calling you because, you know, I need, my, I got a debt and I need for you to come, you know, pay this, this bill for me or, or whatever. It, it may not, I'm coming, but I may not pay that bill. It may not work like that. Right. And so that's the way it'll be when our father shows up, too. He's coming. But it's it, probably it, not the way that you want him to come. Yeah, it probably ain't coming. going, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm only my love and justice may now shelter those who hunger and thirst for them. Only I know how to receive into my perfect justice those who make attempts against their own existence. Attempts against their own existence? Is it talking about killing people now? Are talking about killing suicide? The Third Testament is one of the only, well, I'm going to say the only scripture that actually talks about suicide. But is this a reference to it right here? My perfect justice, those, right. Only I know to receive into my perfect justice those who make attempts against their own existence. Their own exi attempts against your own existence is death and suicide. Mm -hmm. So they find themselves in his justice. Let me go to the earlier part. Only my love and justice may now shelter those who hunger and thirst for them. Love and justice. So we're thirsting for love and justice. That's what we're thirsting for, love and justice. Only my love and justice might now show through those who hunger and thirst for them. So you're hungering for the love and justice, and it is the love and justice that is providing shelter for you. Right. And so you have these people on one side, and then these other people on the other side is actually trying to kill themselves. Mm. Mm. Number 17. If you knew that the loneliness of the spirit is more terrible than loneliness of this world, you would await the last day of your existence with patience and fortitude. Yeah, see, the Third Testament, like I said, is the only book that I've read that actually addresses suicide in any, any way. We, we haven't heard about suicide in the Old Testament and the New Testament and or the Apocryphal books or even the Dead Sea Scrolls. They never, they, they never talked about killing yourself and what actually happens to those people. We speculate on it. We think it's a bad thing, but... <laughs> That's the only thing. Until you get to the Third Testament where it starts talking about what actually happens to those people that commit suicide. It's like you're going to be by yourself. It's like, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to start making up stuff because I'm only, I can only imagine what it's really like. So that's what I'm trying to do. But if, you want, if you're supposed to live on this earth for so many years, 80 years, you're supposed to live for 70 years. But you killed yourself at, you know, the age of, you know... 20, you're going to now sit there in the dark for 50 years. That's, that's what I kind of think. And not only are you in the dark and lonely and ain't nobody around, nothing, but you have your conscience there. We find in another, you read in another section of the Third Testament, you have your conscience that's sitting there over you asking you, why didn't you have, why, why didn't, didn't you have faith? Why didn't you have faith? Why didn't, why didn't you stick with it? Why didn't you do it? So every time you try to get some comfort and, you know, some companionship, the only being that you have is your conscience that's sitting there whacking you. He ain't your friend at all. So, like, suicide ain't, you know. 
I do not destroy any of my children, no matter how they offend me. I protect them and give them the opportunity to correct their faults and return to the road they have abandoned. Yeah, see, that that's one of the, I ain't going to say errors, but that's one of the hard parts about the Old Testament, especially the Old Testament, is that they used words like God and Lord to replace, and Elohim to replace other beings. So the way it reads is if, is if God killed, the Father killed all of these people, but he didn't. It was the angel of death that came through as a result of these people's sin and transgressions that actually got them killed. Mm -hmm. He cannot kill us. It's impossible for him to destroy anything that he's created. But he do have, there are those, you know, in his, in his in, under his command that will take care of that little bit for him. Right. Mm -hmm. Those angels that uh, I guess that work for him. Yeah, all of them work for him. Everything on a, on a, everything around serves him, including the death angel. Right. I mean, I think uh, is that Hermes calls some of the angels that we would think of bad as you know a good and honorable angel. Um, the angel that you know brings the punishment. The angel of punishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet, in spite of that fact. I have absorbed them. They shall reap the fruits of their works, and it is these works that shall judge them and point them out to them the straight road. So this 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 world is like a proving ground. You make a mistake, you do an error. Well, guess what? You get on the receiving end of that error, and then you and then you get it. You don't make that mistake no more. You don't do that no more. So once you leave this planet, once you once you graduated from planet Earth and you're ready to go on to higher higher you know dwelling places, higher mansions, you you understand how to be a human now. You have you have been a human master, and and it's and it's how because when you did harm to someone else, you had to suffer that same harm, and now you know better. Now you know better. Mm -hmm. Now you don't talk about fat people no more. You know, yeah, that, it's, it's sort of like when you whip your kid, you know, for doing something or, you know, punish them for, give them a good talk lashing or, you know, a little rod, then um, most of the times they don't go back and do that same mistake over and over again. So, yeah, this proving ground is for you to, to learn how to not make those same mistakes again. Well, you know, I, and I don't, I don't like, you know, whipping my children. I know the Bible tells me to do so, and, you know, I, 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 I do. But one way I do like to punish my children is when I see them picking on each other and I can put them in the same predicament. Like, you know, for a while, one, you know, the older children weren't washing the dishes. The younger children were washing the dishes. And, you know, the, old, the older ones got a little arrogant and started, you know, picking on them. You got to do this. You got to do that. Uh -huh. Well, you flip that around and now you wash dishes. You don't get that no more. Right. That don't happen no more. Right. You know, oh, you, that, you get on that chore. Hurry up and do that chore that you're supposed to do. That's your chore. Hurry up and take care of it. Wait a minute. Yeah, that worked real good. You do that chore now. That's your chore. Because that wasn't a good chore. Yeah, they didn't want to do it. The first, the one who had the assignment didn't want to do it. And you, de the one that's doing all the talking, they definitely don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So you put it right on them now. Right. And the same thing with other stuff like poverty. Uh, I mentioned obesity, but, you know, having ailments like, you know, um, uh, maybe drug addiction, you could think. Who you are laughing at the person who is strung out on drugs and then you find yourself you know later on and guess what one of them the drugs and found you mm-hmm yeah yep that that will happen we in another section we're in another section the reason for trials and sufferings i think this is the last one no i don't think so okay we'll be on a break i'm good everybody good you good? You good? Yeah. Well, let's go on then. Verse 19. The reason for trials and sufferings. Okay, this is going to, I guess, summarize, you know, what you were talking about. He's going to tell us exactly what happens uh, now. 
Okay, number 19. Know yourselves. I have beheld the existence of mankind of all the eras, and I know what has been the cause of all his sufferings and misfortunes. He, know, he knows. He knows everything. Since the first time I have seen men taking their lives because of greed, materialism, and lust for power, they have always neglected their spirit, believing themselves only flesh. And when the time has come to leave their human form on earth, only what they did in their physical life remain without gathering any glory for the spirit because they did not seek it, for they did not think about it, nor were they concerned with the virtues of spirit or its knowledge. Yeah, so we concentrate on this, this world. A lot of people say we got one life to live, we got to live it. You know. Well, we were never taught about spirit. I mean, you know, we were taught, like I said in a previous class, that, you know, spiritual things were far beyond us. They were spooky, they were scary, they were ghosts and all this other stuff. That we were just not taught, you know, that we were a spirit, you know, with being... And, you know, this flesh was just our covering. It was our protection. That, But we were never taught it. So now we're, we we think of ourselves more of, of, as physical. Yeah, well, we were taught by physical people. We were taught by materialistic people. We were taught by people who thought no further than, you know, their paycheck. Even going back to our teachers, you know, or going back to our preachers. Or you know our doctors, every every everybody that stood in front of us to actually teach us something were materialistic people. Nobody was really a spiritualist individual. Nobody. I mean, we might have met some spirit, some people who was more spiritual, spiritually minded. You know, we may have met them from time to time, but they weren't our teachers. They weren't the one standing up trying to tell us nothing, and we probably wasn't listening to them anyway because they didn't have. A bunch of materialistic stuff and we didn't want to get where they were it's like the world is bent on materialism mm -hmm. they were satisfied in living without seeking the pathway which leads to God so they didn't didn't attempt to become spiritless individual they just settled for the materialistic stuff and a lot of these people will change and once they realize that you know we are spiritual beings and we're supposed to take advantage of that and when they learn some of the tricks of being spiritualist individuals like we talked about earlier doing charitable deeds and repentance and you know prayer and you know that kind of stuff they, they will change but there's going to be a lot of people that's going to fight to the end and a lot of these people that are going to fight to the end are our teachers the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug I'm, I'm sorry but I went to one of them's little singing last night for Pastor Appreciation Day, and they ain't gonna give that up. They ain't giving that up. Money, fame, big robes, people giving them flowers and gifts, and you know, making sure they're driving around in a nice car, living in a nice house, all for you know, you know. They ain't giving that up. They ain't giving it up. And here you are talking about the angel of repentance and how you're going to be going through thorns and thistles. They're not going to give it up. They're not going to give it up. Not, not easy. It's going to be forcefully taken from their hands. But these are the people that's teaching us. These are the people who are responsible for our education spiritually and otherwise. Now, in spite of the advancements of your civilization, you have grown more and more distant from nature, as well as from the spiritual, from what is pure, from what pertains to God. See, they, talking about the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug up there at his church the other day, we heard you know people who talk about how they can't eat stuff from nature. <laughs> they don't like eating stuff from the tree. I don't eat fruit. I don't eat anything off the tree, nuts, fruit, or whatever. Another person said. Another person said, you know, you know, uh, we had a visitor to come to our house not too long ago, and they was afraid to walk into our garden. Mm -hmm. You know, they came to see our garden, but you know, when they they had to stand far off and try to take pictures of it because they was afraid to go in there with that vegetation that was higher than grass. Mm -hmm. It was stuffed up to their ankles, and 
but that's where that's where we live now where we watch television and we are put in a mindset that we are supposed to have lives that don't include nature when do you see nature on television Everybody's in apartment buildings with with granite countertops and electronic devices. There there is no there is no nature even around for us to Yeah, to behold, to look upon, to cherish, to yeah. put us in the state where we become one with the Father, yeah. A lot of the majority of the people live in cities. You know, and it, you live in a country environment, but the lot of the majority of people live in cities. And there's quite a few of them who can and do leave their apartment dwelling, go to work, go to school, go to shop, go to church, and never are subject to the environment. Never, never so much as a raindrop will fall on their head. They, I mean, they won't feel the wind. They will be under the air conditioning the whole time. They may be in a car, they may be in an elevator, but they don't have to go outside. That's a that's a sad existence because that makes me think of the people. You know, they leave their apartment house, they go you ride the uh, elevator down to the, the basement. Yeah, the basement. You get in the, get car, the car. Yeah. You drive out the, mm -hmm. out of the doors and you drive right into you know go down drive downtown but honk your horn and you know people in the way and then you drive right into the parking garage. Even at Walmart has a parking garage down there. You drive right into the the basement of Walmart. You get on the elevator and you ride up and you do your shopping. Wow. That's never good. you never feel the outside temperature. Here it is, you know. The soil, it, the dirt, soil on your hand, the wind in your yeah, face. Not, yeah, not a speck of dirt on your shoe. Wow. That is why during each stage of your existence, you have fallen into greater weakness, into greater bitterness, in spite of your wishes to be stronger and happier each passing day that you live on Earth. Now, see, that because it's important. Even now we're having this class and people are like, oh, nature? Well, that's part of the Father's plan. There's a chapter in his book that talks about Mary. And in that book, it addresses um, our so-called universal mother. And we've, we've always, it's kind of what we, I think the closest thing we ever heard about it was Mother Nature. How Mother Nature is our, is just that, our mother. Just like the, the, the creator is our father, nature is our mother. And so we've gotten away from, just the way, same way we've gotten away from our father, we've also gotten away from our mother. And so I'm talking about the average citizen. And so you find yourself, what does it say? You have fallen into greater weakness, into bitterness, in spite of your wishes to be stronger and happier each passing day. So it's, despite the fact that you're praying, because you are away from nature and what is said nature as well as the spiritual mm -hmm. you, 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 are, you are out of touch we're out of touch but you will take a step toward the fulfillment of my law O oh, inhabitants of the world well it's talking about justice talking about judgment talking about tribulation mm -hmm. atonement day you will. We are going to pay. We are going to get straightened out. That's what we have to understand about the tribulation. After the tribulation, we will have no more stains to cleanse. The, the earth is going to be purified. Mm. Right. 22. The ordeals which you encounter along your path have not happened by chance. I have allowed them so that you will earn merits. He gives us a chance to earn merits. He puts people in our way. That you know, a lot of a lot of times, you know, you find yourself under ridicule and people saying stuff against you. That's a good way to to uh, to gain merits is by somebody just coming and 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 you know, berate somebody coming and cussing you out. You know, sitting there cussing you out. Well, that's an opportunity that the Lord put in front of you to, to do it. Like, well, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Why is this person calling me all these horrible names and saying all these bad stuff? Well, that's just an opportunity he put there for you. All right. The leaf of a tree does not move without my will. And I am within the great works of creation as well as the lesser ones. Now, the leaf, I've been trying to understand this leaf. There's a big deal about this leaf. Me being a hunter... 
Uh, I spent a lot of time out there in the woods. And, you know, I look, yeah, imagine hunting, you just, all you're doing is just sitting in one place looking at nature for hours on end. You, you try not to blink almost, but you're looking at nothing but the leaves shaking on a tree. And so you see these leaves shaking. And so, but I, I, I wonder is what he's saying that it is nature that is used to affect us whereas opposed to man-made events i don't know like i said this is this is one of the things i'm studying on is this whole leaf shaking thing mm -hmm. be watchful and pray that you will understand what fruit you shall gather from each ordeal in order for your purification to be short now okay be watchful and pray so that you will understand what fruit. So that's what we we're talking about earlier about you getting getting the opportunities. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to get what you have to get out of it, or it's going to come back around again. You have to understand uh, um, what works you have to do. Um, what you did wrong, mm -hmm. what the problem was in the first place. You know mm -hmm. what what it is that you shouldn't have did or should have did. You have to get it. If you don't. It's going to come back on you. Right. And it's going to be worse next time. Right. Mm -hmm. But understanding that from it you can gather from each ordeal in order for your purification to be shortened. Well, I was just thinking about we had a little um, discussion last night about something that um, we were participating in. And then, you know, I had the opportunity to sit there in silence and talk to the father and say, you know, Sit and think about well what did I do wrong how can I make it better you know what I should have said what I shouldn't have said and that's what he's saying he's saying to take this time and try to understand so that um, that it won't happen again it's more unlikely to happen again than if you just say oh well you know and just you know shrug, shrug it off and it's gonna come back around the next time well you think about you think about your two different children both of them have committed the same act. You bring them in the room and you're talking to them. One of them is, oh, I understand that was an error and I won't do it again. But the other one is having a problem, having a hard time understanding what the problem was in the first place. And they just don't get it. Well, which one do you think you're going to spend more time with? Right. Mm -hmm. That child that, you know, is trying to understand what he's doing. They ain't, they, they ain't trying to understand. They don't want to understand. They, 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 they want to continue to do their thing. They want to continue. They they like them cookies in that jar. They don't they don't see why you put them in the jar any anyway. And they going to get them. You know, you're not supposed to take the cookies. Well, I don't see why. That's why that's why the Lord you know gave us whippings though. <laughs> that you can I tell you what you get the cookie and you are gonna get a beating. How about that? Carry your cross with love, and I will make it possible for you to endure your restitution with patience. Carry your cross with love. We, we're talking about this cross that we all have to bear. It has a lot to do with the stains that we put down, but you know we have to, we have to have we have to have love in it. You know when we find ourselves in a situation where we are being, you know. Uh, purified through pain or whatever we have to have love in it you can't just you know start screaming at the person who who's being used to issue the pain and then expect for it to all be better you know somebody stepped on my foot you know now i want to start fussing and you know cussing at them blah 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 well that's that's going to sterilize those merits and i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to endure that pain again well, I like it when the father says, he says, I will make it possible for you to endure your restitution with po with patience. I will make it possible. That makes me think of when Hermas was complaining to the angel of uh, punishment. No, he was complaining to the angel of, what is it? Uh, Repentance. Repentance. And he said, well, I will go and talk to the angel of punishment to, you know, let him make it a little bit easier for you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 24. If in the midst of laughter, enjoyment, and vanities, men forget and even deny me, why are they fearful and trembling when they are reaping the harvest of tears which torment their spirit and bodies? Then they blaspheme, saying that God does not exist. Well, see, and this is kind of, this is, so you, 
they find themselves in laughter and you know people joking around and joking and you know you always got the funny guy that wants to sit there and, you know mock you they're mocking everything it's like mm -hmm. it's like in today's society especially around men the the guy who's the most ignorant is the one who is the most I don't know prideful he, he he's doing the most talking the most boastful it's like he's boasting over the fact that he doesn't know anything the, the more you know and so the other ones around are you know trying to be cool or whatever for lack of a better word go along with it you know and and so they find themselves you know what, what does it say and laughter and enjoyment and vanities men forget or even deny him so they're running their mouth and you know just forgetting the father not really putting him to mind or even denying him denying that he even exists in these times of laughter while you have funny joe over there the class clown you know you know making light of everything then he says later on why are they fearful and trembling when they are reaping the harvest of tears and um, which torment their spirit and body. So when they find themselves in a calamity, why why are they fearful and trembling? Right. That makes me think, uh, Coach, of an incident that you had told me about how this person um, was doing the same thing. He was mocking you and telling you, man, don't nobody want to hear that and all that other stuff. Basically, uh, forgetting or even denying the father. But then, you know, some, uh, he, something happens to this person and he's left physically scarred, you know, in a bad way where, you know, he's just won't be the same ever in life again. And the father is saying, well, you know, why are you fearful and reaping when you have, you did this, you did this, you are fearful and trembling when you reap the harvest that you put out. Yeah. You put this harvest out and you, you feel for and you're, you're trembling, you're scared, you, you want people to pray for you, but you're reaping the harvest of tears which torment their spirit and, he said, and their body. Yeah, and, and the person she's talking about, his name is Fred, so let's all pray for Fred. I think he's still in the hospital. I believe so. So, Re you know. Re rehabilitation, yeah. Yeah, so, and I mean, he wrecked on his four-wheeler and got hurt pretty bad. I hope it had really nothing to do with what my wife is talking about. And that's the last time that I talked to the individual, you know, it, 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 it was the exact same situation. But I pray for Fred a lot, you know, and, and I'm take this opportunity in this video. Everybody that's watching this video, take the time to mm -hmm. say a silent prayer for, for Fred right. um, as he tries to recover. Right. He's a good guy. He's actually, I kind of like the guy. Well, that person, like he says, in the midst of laughter and tears, that why is that person the the the, the class? I guess you would call him the class clown. Yeah, they, they, it's a it's a lot of them. They just funny. They just they just make light of the situations, and they they don't put any thought into what they're saying. They just find the funniest thing to say, and they say it. They just say it. It don't, it does. You know, it's kind of weird. It's like it doesn't matter what you're talking about. You know, it could be politics, it could be physics, it could be history, it could be mathematics, and and the guy is making light. Oh, there's no such thing as a as an imaginary normal man. That, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. It's like, um, <laughs> but anyway, they do that when it comes to the father, and they get themselves in trouble. Mm -hmm. Man is bold to sin, and determined to deviate from the path of my law. But I assure you that he is very much a coward when it concerns making restitution and settling his accounts. Yeah, we don't want to say I'm sorry. We don't want to go in and, yeah, that, that, uh, we're cowards when it comes to that. You know, nobody wants to put themselves in that position. Yeah, you know, it makes me think about being a kid. You tell a kid, well, say I'm sorry. You do a kid does this. He pushes another kid. And he just don't want to say it. He'd rather get a spanking than to say he's sorry. So, and we're, we're much the same way. So, he, he bold pushing down. But then he like, <laughs> you know, go fix it. And like, oh, man. Right, right. Nevertheless, I strengthen you amidst your cowardness. 
I protect you in your weakness. I awaken you from your lethargy. I dry your tears and I give you new opportunities so that you may recuperate, recuperate the lost light and find the forgotten path of my law again. So, you know, we, 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 we find ourselves in a bad position, but because he is our father, you know, he, he doesn't keep his thumb on us and just continue to mash us. We're, we're eventually allowed to recover and then, you know, everything goes back to normal. And then later on, we'll just get another opportunity to cleanse that stain. Mm -hmm. I have come to bring you, as in the second era, the bread and wine of life, the same for the spirit as for the body, so that you may live in harmony with everything created by your Father. Okay, well, what is that talking about? I have come to bring to you, as in the second era, the bread and wine of life. Now, in the second era, he brought us the bread and the wine of life during the Last Supper. Now, and I don't know, does the Bible call it the Last Supper? Because that might have been the First Supper. That might have been the First Supper. Mm, I don't know. Right. Yeah, no, look, does it actually call it the Last Supper or did we call it the Last Supper? Because, you know, that was the first time where the Father and Man sat down during the Feast of Passover, which is obviously referring to, they, they, they sat down during the Feast um since then, because the Father, because the Creator said that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, He gave us an example of how we are to to live in His kingdom. And such. But since then, we, there's been plenty of suppers. I believe that was actually the first one. And if the so, and if that be you know true, then the the blood or the wine would be His blood, which is our salvation or or the covering of our sins. <laughs> I guess we have to we might have to clarify that if Bert heard of conversation we had in the first section of the book but then the bread being the the word you know and so now he comes back again offering the same thing except now it's in a, the, the word is in the third testament which is spirit and truth mm -hmm. and then the um the wine which like you said that, that covers our sins which you know purifies us and brings us you know wellness brings us health He's now through spirit and truth, you know, helping us to understand how it is that our, our sins are causing our illnesses and he's healing us. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 27. In my pathways, the virtues are blooming. On the other hand, yours are covered with thorns, pitfalls and bitterness. Yeah. So. Would he be talking about the law when he said, in my pathway? Yeah, the law, which includes um, the the um, the uh, feast days there. And I did want to mention that we, we have Purim coming up, which is a, which is not one of the seven feasts of the Bible. It's, it's, it, but it is the last feast of the year, which is kind of a celebratory feast where, you know, people are actually, you know, getting you know their families you know in order as far as their wives are concerned and they are also you know um taking care of the business of you know those around them that are harming them and that kind of thing but and it there's some parts to do with you know sharing you know what the lord has provided us with i did want to mention that but i also want to mention that you that this pathway um that he's that I believe he's referring to is talking about the um, uh, the paths to dwell in. The, remember, um, back in Isaiah, it talked about the repairs of the breach and restore of the paths to dwell in, which includes the seven feast days, Passover with uh, unleavened bread, um, atonement, atonement, trumpets. All of those feast days are extremely important. And the next one we have coming up is the Feast of Passover, which, you know, is next month. So I did want to bring that up um, to look for some classes and let's, let's, let's make sure that we, that we are in compliance, that we are aware of what are we supposed to be doing. But let's, let's get some other people involved in it, too, because the more people we can get on that path, um, getting back to the way we're supposed to do which includes his feast days 
Mm -hmm. I, the more chances we have of surviving this thing, we're, we're not going to be able to survive by ourselves. So let's 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 make sure that we we are where we're supposed to be on these feast days. Well, in 27 it says, "The path was on me." You know, his his laws are not burdensome. They're they're good for us. So. And you see the result of them. You yeah. see, you see how you get rain when you're supposed to get rain. You see how you know things actually work. They are different than what we're than what we've grown up in, but you know it it it's, it is blooming. There there is fruits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just you know his his feasts are spiritual. You doing things for others, your charity, your you know stuff of that nature, and the uh, the other other hol holidays are materialism. Yeah, holidays so. versus holy days. So the holidays are materialistic. That's that's why the, the ones we hear about the most are the ones we have to you know spend money on. I used to say nobody paid attention to Thanksgiving because you know it wasn't a, a gift giving day. It wasn't a day you went to buy candy or buy gifts or buy Easter baskets or new clothes or whatever. It was just a day that, you know, you ate and, you know, so the, the grocery stores appreciated it, but everybody else didn't care about it until Black Friday took it over. Right. Now, now Thanksgiving is, is a huge holiday because it's, it's Christmas preparatory day. It's Christmas shopping day. Mm, it's like Usher's in Christmas. Yeah. He who says that the paths of the Lord are filled with thorns does not know what he says, because I have not created pain for any of my children. But those who have withdrawn from the path of light and peace, once they return to it, must suffer the consequences of their loss. Yeah, now having been through this, and I have spent a lot of time meditation on this, and you know what I believe he's referring to here is how... He, he has his path, and we are supposed to be on this path, but we've deviated off the path, and we've gotten on the path of man, and done things according to the way man wants us to do stuff, uh, which includes maybe uh, financing, you know, houses, or um, uh, choosing to get our food from the grocery store only, or, you know, only drinking bottled water, for instance. And then, then when it comes time to get back on his path, it doesn't include bottled water. So now you got to deal with that. You got to deal with the fact that you've been off the right path for so long and you've gotten used to this, this worldly stuff, this stuff that was never in, in his plan. And so now you got to come back. You know, some of us got like five and six luxury cars in the garage just sitting there as collectors of items, you know, you know. That, that ain't the father's will. Mm -hmm. He, we learned that we're supposed to share. Sure, you may have, you know, five luxury cars, but if if the father, if the father, if the father's will is in your five luxury cars, they got something to do with with you carrying people around or doing something. Those cars are working for people. Mm -hmm. They ain't just sitting in your garage for you to show it to your friends, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we gotta get. We gotta get. It's going to take some getting used to getting back to where we're supposed to be. And he said, once you return to it, you must suffer the consequences. On the way back, you got to fall. You're going to fall down is what I'm saying. You you and I, we were on a righteous path. I believe we were, we, we, we were getting, I ain't going to say we were on it. We were in pursuit of the righteous path way back in the 90s. We had discovered the scripture. We were reading. We were, you know, have, we have farm animals. We, we were, you know in touch with nature but then once we got once we graduated from college once I graduated from college and started you know getting you know big huge paychecks or whatever we we turned off of that path we didn't think about nature we didn't think about you know um land or or anything like that so when it was time for us to have to come back to this lifestyle it was difficult it was hard you know it's you know we, there were many times our marriage, marriage was almost destroyed because we just, it just, I mean, it was, I guess maybe it was harder for me or for the children, but it just, things just were, I mean, you know, it just wasn't, we had to suffer through it. You say, you say something, you say you imagine, I, I believe I'll, 
I don't believe that they're totally destroyed. A lot of them will be recovered. But I bet you almost every marriage was touched by it. Every marriage that had to go through it suffered severely. People getting separated and divorces and stuff. Now, like I said, maybe they'll come back together before it all over with. You know, because, you know, one of them's going to realize that the other one's right and they need them and they're going to rush back over there, you know, hopefully. But, you know, I believe it, 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 I believe it affected a lot of marriages, most marriages. Mm -hmm. 29. Why did you drink that cup of bitterness? Why did you forget the mandate of the Lord as well as the mission which I trusted to you? Yeah, so now, now he's getting a little personal here. Because, you know, everybody has a mission. Everybody, when, when they were brought down, we learned this in the Third Testament, that when, when we were born here on earth, we had a Father-inspired mission, but we all, most of us forgot it. Most of us forgot that mission um, and didn't do anything. We, 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 we took on worldly um, uh ambitions and we only focused on you know those things that we wanted to do and didn't really think about it and so uh, we, yeah we just forgot well it tells us that all of us have forgotten it right mm -hmm. Almost, yeah yeah and we, we, we he, well he says because you substituted my law for yours and there you have the results of your vain knowledge bitterness war fantasism Disappointment and lies would suffocate you and fill you with desperation. And the most painful thing for the materialistic man, for the one who submits everything to his figuring and subjects it to the material laws of this world, is that after this existence, he still will find himself carrying the burden of his errors and his inclinations. Then the suffering of your spirit will be very great. You're going to have to pay. we got to pay. You know, we'll talk about earlier how, you know, even though we're forgiven, even though we're forgiven, we still got to pay, you know, and it's, it's about getting back to where we're supposed to be. That's going to be a huge part of the repayment, you know, well, a lot of people, you know, are very, are going to be very disappointed about this here. And this makes me think about what you said about how the, 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 the pastors and such are not going to, you know, be readily uh, wanting to hear this because we're taught in the church is that you know once this life this existence here on earth our, for our physical bodies that you know we go and we live in our mansion in the sky we're, we're not told that you know that's just another step you got to start paying now mm -hmm. and so yeah well look at right there it says and the most painful thing for the materialistic man for the one who submits everything to his figuring and subjects it to the material laws of this world this was this is where the funny guy comes in he says that he don't understand it and so he starts to make jokes of those things that he don't really get you know and and it's because of what it what it says that he submits everything to his figuring and subjects it to the material laws of this world so when you start talking about angels you start talking about the father providing you with stuff it, it doesn't make sense to him mm -hmm. and so he starts ridiculing right mm -hmm. it says rid yourselves here of your burden of sins Comply with my law and come quickly. Ask for forgiveness of everyone whom you have offended and leave the rest to me. For the time you have for loving will be brief if you truly decide to yeah. do it. So, you know, ask for forgiveness of, of for those that you have offended. And that's one of the spiritual tricks is that really all you have to say is please forgive me. You know, and, and everybody who, you know. The, the, everybody who who repents has to be forgiven. So if you had you 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 have to do no more than that, and you kind of put the burden on the father right. and the other person mm -hmm. once you do that. So so you quick you quick to do so, quick to ask for forgiveness. You know. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Come to me, all you who carry hidden pain in your heart, concealed. You bear the pain that betrayed has betrayal has caused you. And your bitterness is great because some much-loved person has deeply wounded you. The, the father uses 
I ain't gonna say he uses. A lot of times it is our family that are the ones who will be used to harm us the most. Our loved ones are the ones that's gonna gonna hurt us. The ones closest to you, yeah. The ones, the ones closest to us, the ones that's, that's, it ain't gonna be the stranger. It, you know, the, it's gonna it's gonna be your sister. It's gonna be your brother. It's gonna be your mama, your daddy, your son, or your daughter. Right. Mm -hmm. Come to meditate, so that prayer may enlighten you, and so that you may know if at some time you were the cause of your own betrayal. Yeah. So, and it, it talks about in the third testament how we are to when we find ourselves in a painful position, how we should go find that quiet place and think about why it is that we're feeling the pain. Or, you know, is it something that we did? And a lot of times you'll find, we'll find out that it is. You know, it's it's the result of something we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you, yeah, when you sit and meditate about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's a hard, hard thing to admit to yourself. And because most of the time you want to find the fault in the other person. But if you sit back and you truly think, you know, what did I have to do with it? Yeah. Okay. Then prayer shall serve to strengthen you in the idea that you must forgive those who, who betray your love, your faith, and your trust. 33. In truth, I tell you that in the very instance that you award forgiveness to those who have offended you, in all its fullness, you will feel my peace. For in that moment, your spirit will have united with mine, and I shall extend my mantle to forgive and cover one and all of my love. That very instant that you award forgiveness to those who have offended, then you will have what peace. Then you're gonna get. Then you will feel my peace, right? So that's 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 important. When we can forgive, then then we'll, so if you if you find ourselves in a non-peaceful situation, there's the trick to getting out of it. Right. You know that you told us. You tell us that. Um, when we say our prayers, that actually think about what you're saying, you know, and that's one of the things when you get to the part where it says, "Forgive me, my trespasses, as I forgive those who trespass against me." To actually think of a person who has offended you, and you know, just think of, you know, think it within yourself how you forgive them. Yeah, or do you have to say it verbally? Mm, I don't think you so much have have to say it verbally. Because, you know, the Father dwells inside of us. Now, it, it could be times when, when it's necessary. But I think for the most part, it's, it's us. That all, everything is taking place in us. When we have a lack of forgiveness, it affects us. When we then give this forgiveness, it's still going to affect us. The, per, the other person may have no idea, you know. The other person may have no idea they offended you in the first place. Right. But if you have, if you, if you have, if you're not forgiving that person, you hold something against them, it's going to harm you. Right. Truly, the master tells you, I have prepared a kingdom of peace and perfection for all spirits. Yet that kingdom that I have prepared is opposed by another kingdom, the world. Yeah. The world hates the father's kingdom. The world, and when I'm talking about the world, I'm talking about like your governments, your civilizations, you know, because we want and need materialistic stuff. We're talking about roads and cars and houses and clothes and food and, you know, all of this stuff require, it's, it's, I ain't going to say it's necessary, but it's always been that we used money to get these things. And the acquisition of money is in opposition to, um, I don't know, the, the, the things we have to do in order to maintain these lifestyles are contradictory to the way the Father wants us to live. You know, he... Well, they've all, almost, you know, near got us in a position where we need, you know... What are working these on things. It. You know what I'm saying? Like, say for instance, people in the city can't eat. They can't yeah. get food. They can't. Yeah. yeah. And you know. So they are in opposition of the the father because he's telling us to to 
to rely on him. Or, yeah, rely on him. And, you know, he teaches us to be uh, uh, tillers of the ground and things of that nature. But, you know, they're telling us, no, you need to buy your food from the grocery store. So, yeah, they're in, they're in complete opposition. Right. He's telling us to help your neighbors. We're telling, the world is telling us, you know, let him get out there and get his own. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, my rim, if my rim is reached by means of humility, love, and virtue, to possess the other kingdom requires pride, ambition, arrogance, greed, selfishness, and evil. Talking about the kingdom of heaven. So, in order to get into the kingdom of heaven... You got to have humility, love, and virtue. And then virtues, you know, we learn about those in Hermes. But you have to have those. Those have to be a part of your life. They're absolutely necessary. But he's saying... I'm thinking about where it just says, he says, to possess the other kingdom, it requires. You, yeah. got, you need it. You, you got to have pride. You don't have it. You got to have ambition. You know, out there in the, other, in the world... You've got to have ambition because you constantly say, you know, you know, I, I think about when you were, I think you were part of this group where y'all were ambitious, where y'all were trying to have a million black men and, oh, yeah. and all this other stuff. Charles Scott. you got to downright be evil and greedy <laughs> and selfish and, and definitely arrogant. Yeah, well, it, it, it did. It, if you did not have those traits, you would not have been successful. Well, it um, makes me also think. Oh, well, let me say. Actually, actually, you you could if you had to put if you'd have used his. Oh, what word did he use? Maxims. If I would, if you had applied his maxims to what we were trying to accomplish, it it would have succeeded. But you know that's that's what more we were doing. We were trying to get rich. Well, it makes me think about, you know, when you said, you always say about how you were different than the men at TVA. How, you know, your, you really wasn't ambitious. You know, not, I don't know, am I saying it right? You wasn't really trying to get to the top of the, yeah, they, top of the thing, I wasn't but really, they were. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, didn't so you, you, weren't, you weren't, in their eyes, I guess, looking for success, complete success or whatever. Yeah. yeah. The world has opposed my kingdom in all times. Those who follow me have been harassed on the road and tempted, whether by visible influences or by visible powers in every era. Yeah. So that's talking about, you know, why does the good suffer? Why does people go through all of these persecutions? They always had. Those who follow me have been harassed on the road, tempted every time, every, all, all throughout time. Remember... Who was the first? Who was the first priest? Aaron. No, um, Abel. And he got killed. Right. This is not the only time you have walked over thrones to reach me. Not the first time your spirit has stumbled forward to reach my presence. In every epoch, you have fought the battle in the deepest reaches of your being. All right, now he's talking about the spirit man here. Now we have to understand if you're new to this channel, new to some of this stuff, you have to understand that. At, at this point, we know that we've been here before. We know that we've had previous lives. We taught that that we don't uh, have any type of remembrance or any way of knowing who we were in our previous lives. But we have been here before. The, the Father has given us many opportunities to um, to come down here to this planet and learn how to live our, our lives as humans. And it has something to do with Hebrews, I think, 9 and 27. that says... Uh, um, the man has wants to die and then there's the judgment well we have one time to to live out his law and then then we you know one time to learn his law and then another lifetime you're gonna have to suffer through judgment day and see what you learn kind of deal so um like i said um we give a lot of classes on the third testament and you can find some stuff on this these you know the spirit man and how it's lived here before and he's saying here that, you know, we've always struggled to, to, to try to get closer to him. We've always, you know, in each, 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 era. each, yeah, in each era, mankind and, and us personally have, you know, stumbled forward. I Meaning, you know, we, we was trying to get to him and, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I reach my presence. Mm -hmm. 
The inspiration of my spirit, illuminating your inner being, has declared battle with the darkness and with the false lights, the false virtues, and with the material, with all that is superfluous, and with all the false greatness of this world. Now, the inspiration of your spirit, illuminating your inner being. Right? The pain that for my sake you have accepted, I bless and sanctify, because all that you suffer for my cause dignifies you eternally. Yeah. So, and we did a class on merits. Pain is a, is a way for us to gain merits, and it's necessary. Purified through, you can get purified through pain. All right, so I don't know if we're going to do that in part two parts or put them together. If we're doing it in two parts, I guess this will need some type of introduction. What we're looking at is uh, chapter 42, which is guilt and penitence, trials and sufferings. We're looking in the third testament of the Bible. Let me give you a quick shot of that in case there's some good information there. But again, we're looking at guilt and penitence trials and sufferings we've gone through the need for repentance and atonement part two the law of atonement we've gone through the reasons for the trials and sufferings right or is that where we're at now where we're at now so we're on the significance of suffering and pain you sure yes all right let's, let's, let's do it as I'm going through here, getting ready to post this, I realized my wife and I skipped a part, um, faith, com conformity, and humility during the trials. And she's not here to uh, finish this section with me, so for the sake of getting it posted, I'm going to go ahead and, and do it by myself. I hope she doesn't feel left out. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start right here in verse 39. It says, human life is the crucible where one is purified and the anvil upon which one is formed that's human life human life the reason why we're here on this planet is to learn how to be humans once we have learned what it takes to be uh, quote good humans then we can go on to the next level that, uh, where we become spiritual beings but while we're here and we're living in this third dimension, it is a crucible. It is a crucible. If you if if you, if you remember from science, the crucible was that little piece of ceramic jar or glass or whatever it was that you 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 put the material in, and then you put the flame to it. Then you put this high heat to it to to basically burn it. <laughs> You know, and that's what this life is. It's it's full of pain. It's full of you know troubles in order to 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 purify us, to make us better. And the same way with the anvil, we 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 are being hammered here in this life. He says it is indispensable for man to have an idea of his spirit, faith in Creator, and love for his destiny in order to carry his cross to the top of his Calvary. So. It's talking about how we live here on this planet, the top of uh, Calvary. That's that to me sounds like when the Messiah said that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We have the opportunity to live in this kingdom type environment where the father is the rule over our life. But in order to get there, what does it say? We have to have an idea of our spirit, uh, faith in our creator and love uh, for our destiny in order to reach the top of that Calvary. Verse 40 says, without faith in eternal life, man falls into desperation. Yeah, because you start to forget, you know, I know for me personally, you know, I, I it, it was, you know, 40 some odd years before I came to learn what the father expects of me. And what I found is that it's quite different than what I thought life, ex what I thought um, was expected of me. And it's quite different. And without faith, you know, it, some of the stuff would, would drive me crazy. You know, it, 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 it's, 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 it's kind of strange and it's kind of odd and it seems like it's not working right. But when you have faith and, you know, a little bit of understanding of what his divine plan is and what it means to bury the cross, to carry the cross, then, you know, we can get through, um, we can get through life. Um, he says, amidst the trials, without elevated ideas, he sinks into materialism. And without strength to withstand a disappointment, he gets lost in despair and vice. Yeah, this is what happens when we don't have faith. 
when we don't have faith that things are all going to work out in the end, we get a little bit desperate, you know, and, you know, and then we fall into materialism where this is our really only hope where, you know, we think that it is our material goods that is actually going to help us in the end. And so we start to try to accumulate these things, maybe even hoard these materialistic stuff. Because we have a lack of faith in in the Father's plan, we start to you know get it for ourselves, um, and then it says we get lost in despair and vice. So we kind of fall back on on those two things when we have a lack of faith. Forty one says, "I tell you to love your cross, for it for if you rebel upon being made to carry it, the pain will open a deep wound in your heart." And I can speak for this from from personal experience. When you, when we are bearing our cross, I mean, we're going through all of these, you know, different persecutions and trials that we that we are to 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 go to. We we have to suffer these with love. You, we can't lash out. We can't get angry. We can't get you know upset or selfish when these trials come up on us. We have to approach it with love. And if we don't. If we don't have love when all of these bad things are happening, because a lot of them are going to come from our family members, our closest friends. And when we don't bear this stuff with love, then we're going to get a little bit resentful. And we're going to get a little bit hurt by, you know, the people that are put in these positions to, you know, to to inflict this pain on us. And that, that's basically how it works. Um, the father said he uses everything and everybody in order to mold us to where we are to be, including our loved ones. And so we just have to be ready to to uh, to bear that cross with love. He says, I do love my cross, O people. OK, remember that the Messiah had to, to, to carry his cross. And it, it was kind of a symbolic thing that he did there as as he was, you know, headed, you know, to to be crucified there. But this is exactly what we go through now. You know, it's just, you know, we have to get that. We have to have the spiritual understanding for it to make sense. But this is what we're going through now. So he bared his cross. He says, and do you know the name of my cross? And talking about, you know, him still having to bear his cross. What is the name of his cross? Oh, is you, oh, humanity, whom I love so much are my cross. So we have to bear. He has to bear the cross of us. Now, I guess to me, this is talking about, you know, all of the, the trouble that we're still giving him. We are his children, yet we are, you know, disobedient and rebellious, you know, but he still has love for us and he will continue to have love for us as a parent does the child no matter how we act you know even though we may destroy ourselves and hurt ourselves he's still there um bearing the cross which is us 42 faith acceptance and humility before that which i have disposed will make the journey shorter for you do not walk the painful road more than once but the trial is prolonged if when faced with the trials rebellion non-acceptance and blasphemy arise all right so <clears throat> now this is talking about the trials that we go to how you know we learn them once you know we we may be suffering persecutions we may be suffering a lot of stuff but it is a once in a spiritual lifetime trial meaning after we have accomplished the trial or gotten over the trial or learned our lessons in this type lifetime and we go to sleep and take a you know a bit of a respite and come back for another lifetime we do not have to suffer the same trials we do not have to go through the same pain unless what does it say unless faced with the trials rebellion non-acceptance and blasphemy arise so if we if, if, if once we're faced with our trials if we want to be rebels rebels or don't accept it you know try to reject it or even blaspheme the Lord saying you know stuff like why is you why why is he punishing me and all of this kind of stuff then guess what we get to go through those trials again and they become more more intense next time for you shall have to travel that road again until the lessons is is learned yeah so if, like I said, if, if rebellion, non-acceptance, and blasphemy, now we're going to have to go through those trials again. Whatever they are, we're going to have to go through them again. And so that's one of the reasons why we have to approach these trials with faith, love, and perseverance. 43 says, I tell you that the trials prepared for man... What, uh, 43, I tell you that the trials prepared by man for himself in this era are very great. For they are necessary for his salvations. Okay. 
talking about the era that we live in. This is, you know, what we know to now as Judgment Day. Judgment Day lasts for a thousand years. And as we are born and live in this time, we are faced with a lot of uh, a lot of trials, a lot of a lot of stuff going on here in 2019, 2020. Do they maybe even 2021 that really haven't gone on in the lives of our, you know, our forefathers. They didn't have to go through the things that we're having to go through. And the reason why we're having to go through them is because this is Judgment Day. This is the time when everybody's going to be purified one way or the other. We are all going to be purified at the end of this tribulation. At, at the end, once this whole thing is, is over, the seven year tribulation, plus I'm going to go in for a little bit of a respite as they wait for their their uh, new lives here on earth in the kingdom of heaven period. When they do make it back, everybody's going to be purified, you know, and that's why everybody's going through so much right now. Through what is most loved by each man, eternal justice shall arrive at an accounting for the works of every human creature. Let me read that again. Through what is most loved by each man, eternal justice shall arrive at an accounting for the works of every human creature. So now, is this saying that the stuff that we love the most is what's going to harm us? And you know, um, um, you know, as I go through this, you know, I've listened to this a lot of times, but this is really the first time I've actually read the words on paper. Even though I may have listened to this verse 50 times, um, the reading it on paper, you know, brings out a little bit more when he, especially when he says, through what is most loved by each man. So the things that I love the most sounds like that's what's going to be used to get this accounting. You know, that's what's going to be used to 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 be part of my judgment or something like that. Uh, leave leave a message uh, in the comments if it makes more sense. I wish I had my wife here. She may be able to help clarify some of this stuff. But let's go on. 45. How important is it that humanity come to an understanding of what spiritual restitution means? So that realizing that the spirit has a past which only God knows, they accept with love, patience, respect, and even gladness the cup of bitterness. The cup of bitterness knowing that through it they are cleansing past and present stains paying debts and gaining merits before the law yeah so uh we talk a lot about you know the past spiritual lives that we have led um because you know it's, it's new in the third testament it's kind of novel we haven't really you know uh thought about this much you know from the old testament and the new testament even the apocryphal books don't touch on it much so, you know, it's really important that we understand this, that, you know, in our past uh, lives, we have committed acts and deeds that we thought we got away with. You know, we, we went on and went to sleep and there was no real, you know, uh, pain or uh, restitution having been paid for the acts that we made in those previous lifetimes. And here we are in Judgment Day. And we're having to make up for all of the stuff that we did in our previous lives. That's why we have to approach it, like I said, with love, patience, respect, and even gladness. Because we are realizing that, you know, I may be going through something right now, but it is making up for something I did in the past, something I don't even know about. So we have to approach it with a little bit of gladness there, too. Saying, you know, I'm glad this happened this way. I'm glad, you know, this person... You know, uh, fussed me out or blessed me out. I'm glad this person stepped on my foot. I'm glad this person, you know, uh, wrecked my car or whatever, because that is help. That is helping me to gain merits that I need to go on to the next level. Um, 46 says there shall be no elevation through pain that is not suffered with love, respect for my justice and acceptance of what each one has brought upon himself. Yet the elevation is in the midst of the trials can only be given to men through their understanding of the meaning of the law of spiritual restitution yeah so we are we are suffering through these pains and stuff a lot of which we we have no idea why we're going through it but if we don't approach this with what does he say there love respect Love, respect for my justice and acceptance of what each man has brought upon himself. Then, you know, our pain is 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 um, 
rendered useless uh, is, is is sterilized meaning we're not getting anything out of it we, we talked about a few minutes ago how we are even going to have to go through it again that's why it's important that we don't want to go through this stuff again so that's why it's important that we that we have love respect for the justice and accept what is coming up on us knowing that we brought it on ourselves, even though we don't remember we don't remember ever doing something to this little old lady that you know is you know accusing us of this or calling us that or whatever it's something in our past lifetimes that, that that's being made up for and if we can approach it with love not only does the 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 pain in there with that person we don't have to go through it anymore but um we actually get merits out of it that those you know those tokens that we'll need in order to get to the next level and you know <clears throat> this this all comes through what he said the understanding of the law of spiritual restitution and that's what we find in in the third testament it has a wealth of information ranging from you know a to z all throughout everything in humanity we could learn something but it, it it does talk about the law of spiritual restitution and how we have to make up for what we what we what we have done all right y'all i know i fumbled through that but i did get it through so um we're gonna go on to the next section here i don't know yeah if you believe that the trials of life occur by chance it will be difficult for you to become stronger well be yeah because you just think stuff is happening randomly, but once you realize that it's a cause and effect, that everything that's affecting you, there was a cause, you can start to make significant strides as far as becoming a stronger person. However, if you understand the true meaning of restitution, justice, and atonement, then your faith will help you to evolve spiritually in conformity to triumph over your ordeals. All right, let's look up this word. What does restitution mean? Uh, like a <clears throat> payback? Let me see. Look at a synonym. Compensation, recompense, reimbursement, amends, repayment, refund, restoration, or a return. <clears throat> so if you understand the true meaning of restitution, justice, and atonement, then your faith will help you to evolve spiritually. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I can, I can, I can understand that more better than I can explain it. But yeah, that may, that, that's that's enough said, I guess. It pleases me to test your spirit in various ways because I am shaping, modeling, and perfecting it. For that purpose, I use all and everything I take for my instrument. Equally the just and the unjust and I serve my purpose with light Just as I convert darkness to my service. Yeah, see the, the, the father is is um, Beyond our words, but <clears throat> knows he Well, he's not testing us. He's just uh, Is he testing us? He, he's he's perfecting us. This is a growing ground. This is a proving ground. This is an area where you have to learn to be humans. And in order to do this, you are subject to different trials and tests and different stuff that mold you into being the person that you're supposed to be. It's, think of like basic training. You know, was that what was they doing to you in basic training as they were turning you into a soldier? Torturing us. <laughs> Some people will see the what the what the father has on us as torture, but it's not. It's for your benefit. It's stuff that you need. Yeah, a lot of times, as I said in the previous um, lesson, that you know when I would get upset and I would go through trials and stuff, I would just go out to the field and I would just holler, "Why? Why? I don't understand you. I don't understand you. Why are you doing this to me?" But you know. Um, like you said, those things I can look back now that they actually help help shape me, help mold me, help turn me into the person that I'm striving to become. So yeah, perfecting is a is a is a great word. And he says, I take for my instrument equally the just and the unjust. So he uses everybody for his benefits. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm, because remember he said that every spirit has a has a part of him in it. Good, bad, righteous, unrighteous is a part of him in every spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I say he always puts those together. He puts the person 
he puts the murderer beside the person that, for some reason or another, needs to be murdered. You know? and yeah, it works out, I guess. Yeah. It pleases me to test your spirit in various ways. Well, I've read that. Mm -hmm. We are at... Uh, right here. For that reason, I tell you that when you find yourself in difficult times, think in me, in your master, who with all love will explain to you the reason for the trial. But you have to do it right. Remember earlier, you cannot sterilize your marriage. You cannot, um, you cannot take the wrong attitude when you're in this situation or what he's telling you here won't happen. You have to basically go to him and Probably. get Humbly, and, and, and in quietness, and, you know, waiting for him to give you an answer. But, you know, when you do so and, and say, well, why is this happening to me? He will give you an answer. When you was out there, yeah, like you said, out in the um, nature or field or whatever you want to call it, doing that, I'm sure most of the time you can look back and you actually found the answer or the solution. Mm -hmm. I would say 99% of the time, the answer always appeared. Uh, within a very short amount of time. Well, that's what the scripture tells you to do. In another part of the third testament, it tells you to go to nature, to 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 try to hear from him. It tells you to go to the quiet place of your bedroom as well. But nature is a huge place to go when you want to understand something, because he says he speaks through all of the he speaks through all of nature. Yeah. Forty nine. There are chalices from which everyone must drink. Some later, some before. So that everyone comes to understand and love me. Yeah. So talk about the cup of bitterness and talk on about the random, almost seemingly random things that people will have to go through. It's not going to be so random when you think about that it is just judgment and the people are getting, we are getting what we just deserve. Misery, illness, slander, and dishonor are very bitter chalice from which many must drink. Not only sinners. Yeah, this is a big part of it. Some of you guys watching this channel, and Stacey, I know you can attest to this, is that this is the stuff that you go through. Mm -hmm. Misery, illnesses, slander, dishonor. This is the stuff that, that I mean, yeah, you, this is part of it. This is part of what you get when you're under the angel of punishment. Yeah, I can say that we've had our share so much uh, of uh, uh, all of them, even though, you know, not too many illness, but the misery, slander, dishonor, you know. Maybe I don't share illnesses, but, it, and the thing is, it says not only sinners. Now, a sinner is a person who knows the Lord, but is breaking the, breaking the commandments. Right. So those will be those that are under the angel of punishment, those sinners that are trying to get time to, you know, come back over to the right side of doing things after they've dealt with the angel of punishment. You know, and, and dealt with the angel of repentance and even on the other side. Well, this verse says that, that that's still going to be a part of their life. Misery, illness, slander, dishonor will still be a part of, you know, the draining of the cup. Some of the stuff they're going to have to drink. Remember that in the second era, the Messiah, the most righteous of all human beings, drank the most bitter callous of which... You can conceive. Yeah, remember what all they did to him. Spit on him, hit him, poked him in the side, gave him vinegar to drink. Mm -hmm. They 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 did the worst possible stuff to him. He he was he was already living a life of of I don't want to say poverty because he was super wealthy, but you know, he was barefoot and he was hungry and homeless. He was barefoot and homeless. I shouldn't say hungry. Um because the father was one of the things the father pr promises to provide is food, so he he would have had food, but you know it doesn't. But like he said, it the the birds of the air have a nest, but you know the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Talking about the things that they they did to him. Um. Yeah, so he he also he he had already come from a humble existence, and then right there at the end of the life, in the end of his life, he got completely humiliated. Mm hmm. Yeah. The obedience, the humility, and the love with which one drinks the callous of pain will lighten the cross and sharp, shorten the trial. Yeah, and like I said earlier, you have to you have to drink your cup of bitterness with love. You have to you have to do it with patience. You cannot, you know, you can't scream out, you know, in pain. 
You know, you kind of you kind of got to take it and you kind of got to bear it. Yeah, that reminds me once again of when Hermas was telling the angel of repentance how he wished that, you know, people time would be uh, longer. And he was like, oh, you really need to be quiet because you don't know what you're talking mm, about. That, yeah, yeah mm. or me, I said that, yeah. Mm. But he, um, yeah, because, you know, you find out. But he's saying that by uh, being obedient and humble and your the love that you have will shorten shorten the trial shorten your time yeah and 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 it's like you, you think okay this this sudden infliction of pain stopping your toe comes up on you all of a sudden if you sit there and jump up and down screaming that blah 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 that that that, that you know about your toe that pain is going to last longer than if you were to say you know thank you father for you know this this pain it's, it's going to go away quicker I wonder is that why some people tell, like your parent to tell you, well, just try not to think about it. Don't even think about it, you know. Mm, Don't maybe. sit there and think about it and get upset and stew in your anger. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Everything that surrounds you tends to purify you, but not all have understood it that way. Do not allow the suffering that you endure in your cup of grief to be sterile. Right, now, so... He's talking about uh, how he uses all of everything. He said earlier that he uses the just and the unjust equally. He uses everything to purify us. Every everything around us, from the weather to you know time itself. Everything has has it, everything is put here to help us get the the teachings, the understandings of what we need to, what we need here on earth. People say, what is the meaning of life? The, the purpose of being down here is to learn what we need to learn so we can go to the higher level, so we can go on. From pain, you can extract life that is wisdom, meekness, fortitude, and sensitivity. All from pain. Pain mm -hmm. purifies. We did a class called Purify, Purification Through Pain. You can check that one out. Right. Understand, disciples, that pain separates the evil fruits from your heart. Gives you experience and makes your errors turn into success. Yeah, pain. Pain is pain is our friend. If it wasn't for pain, it, it, our life would be ridiculous. I once, when I was a child, you know, I, my parents were, you know, they watched uh, one show. I remember one show where they was watching where they had this kid on television. I don't know if it was 60 Minutes or whatever, but this kid was on there who felt no pain. It was a little girl. She's about 11 years old, and she felt no pain whatsoever. Her, she, it's like her body did not have pain sensors. And so they, they, her parents were very concerned because she was always hurting herself, always burning herself, always breaking her legs. She never felt any pain. And they showed this girl come down these steps wide open. And here I was. I was about 11 myself, and I was like, whoa! <laughs> The way she come down the steps and her legs are going one way and her body's going the other, because she had no idea of what pain was, she was completely tearing herself up. I, I would be surprised if that little girl is alive today. Mm. You know, a lot of times you see kids like that, they're always in cask and then their parents have to make their home like a real like safe zone because they just can't feel the pain. But here it tells us that pain is a good thing. Yeah, pain is definitely a good thing and, you know, and, and, and one thing we learn in the third testament of the Bible is that it actually one of the ways that helps us to get to where we want to be. Everybody talks about they want to be saved, or, or want to be sanctified, want to be holy, want to be in the kingdom of heaven. Well, pain is one way to get there. That's why a lot of times people will call on the Father and they end up getting in the car accident or getting shot or you know something bad happens to them. It pur purifies. Purifies real quick. Thus. Your father tests you with the aim that the light shine in your understanding. However, when you do not understand and suffer pointlessly because you do not understand the meaning behind my wise lessons, your pain is sterile and you do not make use of the lesson. So when you start crying, when you start acting a fool, you know, you, you, the child goes, you, 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 the child does something wrong and you go to give them a punishment. 
and you know say it's a butt whooping you give them a butt whooping and they they, they go in their room well if they could go in their room and they could think about why it is that their butt is hurting giving them the idea that maybe you shouldn't do that thing again or they can go in there and just screw oh, I hate you I don't want to do that I don't want to do that not only are you not getting the lesson that you're supposed to get out of it don't do that thing again but you piling on and making it worse you adding to it man exclaim if there exists a God of mercy and love then why must the good suffer for the bad the righteous for the sinners yeah this is there's, there's, people ask this question all the time this is answered in the third testament I, why do the, why do the good suffer why do bad things happen to good people this is purification merits because of guilt because of things we've done because our stains have to be removed because we're not doing enough charitable deeds because we're not doing enough repentance because we are not doing the we haven't shown what was the very first verse of this thing the the the, the two sides that you could choose we aren't choosing the pleasant side. We're choosing we're choosing the other side, the painful side. Mm -hmm. Truly, I tell my child, tell you, my children, each man does not come to this world only for his own salvation. He is not an isolated individual, but forms part of a whole. The scripture tells us that we all need each other. The smart people need the dumb people. The rich people need the poor people. The, just like the poor people need the rich people. Mm -hmm. The the um. It, it, we all are helpers to one another. Yeah. The uh, poor can help the 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 rich by praying for him, and the rich can help the poor by you know providing substances and different things like that. And and it has to be that way. Those who have an abundance of food need those who are hungry. If if they don't come across enough people that they can help with their abundance of food, they're gonna get in trouble with that abundance. They're gonna get in trouble, even if they're just eating too much. In the human body, does not a perfect and healthy organ suffer when the other organs are diseased? Yeah, I mean... It... Well, that says it all right there. Mm -hmm. In the human body, does not a perfect and healthy organ suffer when the other organs are diseased? The whole body suffers. Right. This is a material comparison so that you may understand the relationship that each man has to others. The good must suffer for the evil, but the good are not completely innocent if they do not struggle for the spiritual advancements of their brothers. Meaning that if you don't do these charitable deeds, if you don't actually go out there and help those, you have not acquired enough merits to forego these pains and these stuff. So you ain't innocent. You ain't did enough. Doing bad is equivalent to not doing good. And I should say that the opposite but not doing not doing a good thing seeing an opportunity to do something good and saying you know what I ain't gonna do it I'm gonna sit here in my own self business is equivalent to doing something bad seeing that lady carrying that that bag and struggling with it and saying I'm not gonna help her she ends up dropping the bag breaking her eggs or whatever is equivalent to me going up and smacking out of her hand think about it that's what it's saying Nonetheless, as individuals, each has his own responsibility, and being part of my spirit and made in its image, he possesses the will and the intelligence necessary to assist the progress of all. You have to. So if you don't, you're guilty. That's something that, that, that a lot of us is guilty of, is not helping each other. We, we were not taught that we were supposed to do that. We were not taught that it was necessary. It was like a bonus to actually give back and help people and do stuff for people, you know. And we were not taught that it was a requirement, that it was necessary. Interpret my teachings justly. Do not think that my spirit is pleased seeing you suffering on earth or that I have come to deprive you of all that is gratifying to you to enjoy it myself. Yeah, don't, don't be thinking that he don't want us to have stuff. You know, that, that's not true. It's that stuff getting us in trouble. I come to make you recognize and respect my laws. For they are worthy of your respect and observance, and because obeying them will bring you happiness and eternal peace. Yeah, and disobeying this, this them is going to get you killed. 
and especially in this tribulation and what we're going through right now is going to continually get worse and worse and worse until the climax of the tribulation and if you are not within the confounds of his laws getting his protection you're going to die it's simple as that you know you, you cannot survive on your own will there's a lot of people out there stacking up guns and stacking up food right now and you know they ain't going to be around to enjoy none of it I must tell you that as long as you inhabit the earth, you should make an effort to make your existence here as amendable as possible. It is not necessary to weep, suffer, and bleed infinitely to merit peace in the beyond. Let's see what that word, let's see what a synonym for that word. Uh, agreeable, open, acquiescent, willing, docile, responsive, uh, pliable, or cooperative. So, I guess the word nice. Be nice as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then it says it is not necessary to weep, suffer, and bleed infinitely. So, mm -hmm. so. So he, I think he's telling us that he, you know, back in the previous uh, first word, he was telling he, 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 we're not. He didn't put us down here just to suffer and bleed and hurt and have a terrible life. He wants us to have a peaceful life, but it has to be done his way and through his laws. I agree. Mm. If you could transform this earth from a vow of tears to a world of happiness in which you love one another and where you concern yourselves with practicing good and living within my law, I tell you truly that life would be yet more meritor meritorious. meritorious before me than an existence full of suffering, troubles, and tears, no matter how accepting you were of the suffering. So, if we, but we have to transform this earth from a veil of tears, meaning war, fighting, people getting people hurting and harming each other, pestilence, mm -hmm. disease. You have to change it from being that to a world of happiness. And, you know, Righteousness, yeah. there's a lot of people out there praying for this thing, which is about as much as you can do. It's not going to happen. We're going to get peace through war. We're going to get peace through destruction. Through pain. Through pain. All right, we're almost finished. Let's see the finish line. Let's run through it. Be thankful that no pain is lasting. Your suffering is temporary and I will disappear and it will disappear very soon. Yeah, you have the angel of uh, punishment. That period only lasts for a period of time and then you get the angel of, of repentance where things start to go better. The time of atonement and purification is brief for he who sees his trials and spirituality. Yet for those who envelop who are enveloped in materialism, that which is true, pass quickly, shall go slowly. Yeah, so don't seek out why we, we are going through this. If we can understand why it is that we're going through this, it, it will be better and easier on us. But if we're hard-headed, if we're thick-headed, if we're the creative, we're going to sit there and scream, you know, after, we, after we've been punished, we're going to get popped again. It's going to come around. As the palpitations of your heart pass, in the same way does the life of man pass into infinity. Uh, the battle of your heart's pass and his heart's heart pass. In the same way does the life of men pass to infinity. I don't know if I understand that. Let's go on. There is no reason to fear, for in the same way that one sighs as one sheds a tear or utters a word, so will the suffering in man also disappear. Within the infinite tenderness of God, all your pains and sorrows will have to vanish. All right, y'all. So that's the end of that. That's that on that. Talking about what was the title of this again? Uh, torment. What do you think about this class? Guilt, penitence, trials, and suffering. Oh, okay. Well, I learned that if I am going to uh, do something, I have to remember that. I'm going to have to reap it. Mm, yeah, my reap thoughts, it. my actions. Uh, and then also that there is repentance for me. And then to be able to be able to forgive others. Forgive others and um, keep it moving. You do your part of forgiving them. And it's, it was just a, a, a good class packed with a lot of, a lot of knowledge. All right. Hermes Academy. All right. So that's that on that. Power, patience, continence, and faith. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. We teach virtues.